development, and that was me. Uh, okay. <laughs> I did a head count yesterday, it was 13 people, but we've got, uh, we're talking to three more people. We also have a data analyst on our team, and their primary task is business intelligence. So they're mining all this data that's coming into the database, um, you know, people, what people are searching for, what they're buying, um, looking at our web logs to figure out patterns in, in people's browsing behaviors, and bringing in information from external sources like Google AdSense. He's bringing all that information together and trying to derive some meaning out of it by basically through reporting to management. Quality assurance, problem with the code or error, it's going to cost us money, so we need to catch it before it gets up live. QA person, and we have, we're just one your staff here because we only have one person doing it right now, is responsible for executing unit tests, performing manual functional tests, um, and we're getting into doing more automated regressional testing as well. Three system administrators, and their job is to keep that cluster running <laughs> and to you know, build it or add capacity or um, they're on call 24 hours a day, so they get the 3 a.m. calls. The developers, by the way, are responsible for the database as well. We don't employ a DBA, per se. Um, it's a team effort as far as designing the schema and managing the database. We do a one-week iteration of new features or changes. Another component of extreme programming is pair programming. So it's two developers working side by side, sharing all the responsibility for designing, architecting, implementing. We can't afford two people on every single project. So I call it team programming where um, individuals will, usually two people, be assigned a task um, and they figure out the best way to, that they're going to you know, execute and then they go off and start working on it on their own but they'll be in constant contact with each other as far as progress and what, you know, how they're going to continue to divvy up the, the work. Every single line of code that is written by any developer is checked by a peer. Just, you know, we're looking for mistakes, we're looking for bad design decisions. It's not about the languages that you know. Almost all of our developers have a computer science degree. Most of them come from the University of Calgary. Some of the older people will have been taught uh, C++. The newer people are all learning Java. We don't use either of those, but it's really easy to bring those people in and get them up to speed with PHP and MySQL. The main issue is that you got to be a team player. A lot of coders like to work late at night by themselves. You know, that's how they they think they're being creative and stuff. But it just doesn't work in our environment. We, it's the project is too big for any person to to be isolated in that way. Do you use e-commerce? Do you purchase things online? Do you use eBay? Do you sell stuff on eBay? Um, you can buy stuff from Amazon, purchase music on the iTunes store. It's, it's not just about development because we ask our coders to provide a lot more to the team than just code. They need, they need to be involved in decisions in every aspect of the business. iStock Photo is an e-commerce, but it's also a community. Um, so you have to get in the mind of the community users and understand why they keep coming back to the site, why they drive the traffic that we have. Um, and the only way to do that is actually to use the internet and you know, appreciate what it can do for us. We're continually committed to open source. Really, there, there hasn't been a compelling reason to switch. MySQL is continually working on enterprise features, a really high level of service. Mm -hmm. We have MySQL consultants come into the office quarterly, basically, and spend five days with us training developers, um, looking at our schema, uh, making recommendations, actually sitting down <coughs> with our developers and fixing problems or creating new projects. We've had no problems with our Linux environment hosted on the IBM platform. You know, there'd be days where there was more IBM consultants in the office than there were developers. And wikis, so community-based editing. We're working on tools right now that the community can help us manage our collection, help us keyword our files, like in Flickr where they're tagging. I mean, it's a little different with iStock Photo because those photos belong to a photographer and they're trying to sell and market them so it's really competitive but at the same time um, we were international and our, our main consumer audience is North American but also European Australia but English speak the English speaking world and a lot of our providers are not English speakers or their ESL so they can harness the community to help them market their images better 
we're never done developing. You know, you don't write a website, hand it off to a client and say, see you. It's, it's always evolving. Not everything we release is 100% uh, in terms of quality. You know, if we waited until we were 100%, our competitors would be way ahead of us, right? So we you know, get it to a point where we're happy with it, think it's going to work, put it out there, let the community use it, give us feedback, make modifications, and go from there. Aaron has a BFA from the UFC, okay? and he leads a team of guys with math honors degrees, engineering degrees, computer science degrees. Creativity plays a role in development. I think you guys know this, but just to emphasize this, Aaron is a guy without all that formal training, yet he's the guy with, with the brain big enough to lead this team. If somebody just don't look important, make up different keyword and try to sell it to you back. Preventing somebody from submitting a file that they've downloaded from us. Every image on the site is inspected by a human, by a person. We have 40 inspectors and they're all over the globe. They get paid 50 cents every time that they inspect an image. So they might accept it or they might reject it. We actually reject about 40% of the images that get submitted to us. So we actually get 24,000 images submitted every week, approximately. But we only accept about half. Is that quality, basically? We can't host everything, so yeah, there's a bit of a quality component there. There's no logos in an image. If we're selling for royalty free, there's a lot of legal restrictions like that. Um, you can't have artwork, you can't have certain famous buildings, can't be in the If there's people in the shops, then they have to be model released, so they have to have signs. And we require they submit their model release, the copy of the digital copy of the model release with the image. So our inspectors are very familiar with our collection, and they'll see usually if something comes in um, <coughs> that is from our collection, definitely. But even if it comes in from another provider, even if they don't know that image, they'll say, well, this is kind of the style of this company, and we'll do some research to see if that actually is stolen from another site. And it happens, and we catch it, and we deactivate. If there were keywords on any particular photo that you didn't think were suitable for that image or were misleading, it's a simple click for you. So all you have to do is click and say, hey, I don't think these keywords are appropriate. That gets submitted back to our database for consideration. And uh, we'll look at that almost immediately. So the policing and the power of the community is absolutely incredible in, uh, in, in the new environment. Yeah, we've got I mean, 20,000 photographers that are out there looking for their images in use. I mean, that's a, the, the ego factor for our site is huge. Uh, people want to see their stuff in use. We, one of our staff yesterday came in. He's a really good photographer. Uh, yeah, my shot's on the billboard outside. You know, he's got a photo of the, he had one of his photos on the billboard. So they're going to notice if somebody steals their image. One of the things that our last uh, lead developer did was to kind of instill this, um, instill a philosophy of of extreme programming. One of one of uh, one of the philosophies there was to not overwork our developers. And so we kind of thought that this um, that the best way to work your people was to stick them in a room and feed them and, and make it all dark and, uh, and make them code for 12 to 15 hours a day. And he, and he said that, you know, that isn't quite right, you know, because, uh, you know, after, after you code for six or eight hours, um, you know, your brain turns to mush and you start putting mistakes in the code and it probably takes more time to fix code than it does to write it right the first time. No, we don't do um, overtime. I mean, it's very rare. If there's a deadline, somebody's going to have to work late, but um, I know a lot of shops where 12 hour days, just every day is pretty much like that. Or, but we don't do that, and the main reason is we don't want people to burn out. We want everybody to come in refreshed every day and do their best work. Do people tend to stay around long? We, I don't think we've, we've had never had anybody leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. okay. but we had a, the lead project manager that we had for a while left because he got a really insane offer. And he, and he wanted to go do something a little different. So it's more of a personal decision for him. But uh, we've never had a developer leave. And in, in the company in general, so we're at 35 some people now. Um, I can count about four people that have left or been let go. The number one selling point is for, is for our developers to bring their ideas to the table and have a VP of marketing hear them out or to have the CEO hear them out um, and to have lunch in the same room or to be working in the same you know, same general area, and just to be able to push your chair back, and be talking to a guy who can help help you with those implementing those ideas. Right. 
So yeah, I think that beyond beyond pay, beyond uh, beyond you know working hours, long or short, is just the ability for people to express themselves in an environment where, where they're feeling appreciated. This is a uh, tattoo. It's a little bit risque, so hopefully it's okay for you guys. Our CEO Bruce Livingston has a has a double size version, so 200% version of this on his left forearm. Right? So I want you guys to all go out and get these done on your on your arms or wherever you want to put them. And then we also have some hats and business cards up here. So thank you for your time. Thanks for uh, thanks for paying attention during during this little speech. And uh, come on up and see us. Thank you. Thank you.